r slash today I fricked up. Clara Forsyth says. Today I fricked up be not going to the er uh, after being thrown off a horse. Obligatory didn't happen today. Actually happened decades ago, told the story for years, and didn't realize the problem until it was pointed out to me long after it happened. When I was 15 or 16, I was taking horseback riding lessons. This was long before LASIK surgery, so I was wearing glasses. I was taking classes in dressage and hunter slash jumping, so using an English saddle. If you're unfamiliar, it's what you'll see in the limited footage they show of equestrian sports in the Olympics. I live in an area where most people ride western, the big saddles with a horn, like you'd see in a rodeo or on Yellowstone, so I was pretty much stuck with this teacher. A number of things led to the fall, most of which would not have happened if the instructor was interested in the lesson and not the fight she was having with her boyfriend. First, I was riding an X-Race horse, JJ. While there's nothing wrong with that, he did have a longer stride than the other lesson horses. Most egregiously, the instructor had left the gate between the indoor arena and the walkway leading to the stalls open. And JJ's stall was directly across from this open gate. She did. This so she could more easily get to the landline phone to scream at her boyfriend. Lastly, I wasn't wearing any kind of sports glasses or a strap to keep my glasses in place, and especially with the sweat, they kept sliding down my nose. So I'm practicing, canter circles at the end of the arena, and periodically she would pop her head out to say good job. Until during one circle, I realized far too late that JJ was not turning. JJ was headed for his stall. Two issues there first, all the flooring outside the arena is concrete, which did not seem like an appealing surface on which to land. Secondly, there was a bar across the top of JJ's stall door. High enough it would never cause him an issue, but the girl on his back. It would have scraped me off like a burnt pancake. I didn't have much time to make a decision as I said he had a pretty long stride. So I decided, if I was going to be thrown, I wanted it to be in the nice soft dirt of the arena, not the concrete. So I proceeded to use every stop signal I knew, from sitting back, pulling back on the reins, anything I could think of I did. And JJ listened. He did a sliding stop that would have made any reigning horse proud. JJ stopped. However, physics were not favorable to me. And while I had been trying to stop him towards the center of the arena, full of the freshly fluffed up dirt, instead I was thrown straight out of the saddle and head first into the fence. Hard enough it broke the helmet, and left me extremely disoriented. It was likely only a few minutes, but it seemed like days, as I was trying to figure out which direction was up, and how to best orient my body, to be sitting that way. One of the boarders who witnessed it said it looked like I was trying to swim in the dirt, and that seemed like a good description of what it felt like. Through sheer luck, I finally figured out where the elusive up was, and managed to hoist my upper body in that general direction. Unfortunately, physics was still against me. You see, the gate was designed to swing all the way open and shut, to let the tractor through safely. The gate had been secured by being lifted slightly, and about one quarter dropped into a small groove on the fencing. While this was usually fine, that one quarter inches was no match for the force of a 100 pound girl crashing into it with the momentum of a cantering thoroughbred behind her. So at about the time I managed to sit up, the gate, now swinging freely, had passed through the arena opening, and was moving slowly but surely towards me. I distinctly remember watching the gate as it approached, and a very clear thought of that gate is going to hit me in the face. And that's exactly what happened. I just sat there, having used all my mental and physical abilities to sit up, and let the gate hit me in the face. At least it wasn't moving that fast. Here's the today I freaked apart I told that story for years. And everyone thought it was hilarious. Until one day, a little less than 15 years later, I was telling the story to a friend, who was an experienced horseback rider. She used to compete at a state level. She looked horrified. How bad of a concussion did you have? 
UMM. I don't know. Well what did the doctor say? It was at this moment I realized mistakes had been made. I didn't go. To a doctor. My friend looked like I just told her I was the dumbest person on earth. At the time, I couldn't really argue. So you got thrown into a fence hard enough that it broke your helmet, you didn't know what direction was up, and then a gate hit you in the face, and your parents didn't think you might need at least an x-ray? What was their idea? I really didn't want to tell her. I knew what was coming. Well they said I'd had a hard day, and was probably tired. I honestly thought she might have a heart attack in my living room. You cannot be seriously telling me that they let you go to bed, there are second graders that know you don't let someone with a head injury go to sleep. There were no second graders around to give them medical advice, she just looked at me for another minute, then said, okay that actually explains a lot. Too long, didn't read, getting thrown off a horse is not fun. And if the fall is bad enough to break your helmet, go to the air. It's a less humorous story, but it increases the odds that you'll get to tell more funny stories in. Decapod says. I'm glad you lived. As far as I know the medical consensus slash rumor is that sleeping is actually good for a brain injury, so it can heal better. I agree with your friend that you should have been evaluated, cause that sounds like a lot. But since you put so much emphasis on your glasses at the beginning of the story I was waiting for the part where you say, and then I went to the eye doctor, and had had broken glass stuck in my eyeball for years. Prapple says. As far as I know the medical consensus slash rumor is that sleeping is actually good for a brain injury, so it can heal better. This is true, assuming there isn't a brain bleed. If there's a brain bleed, the person will die in their sleep with no one noticing. If there's confirmed no brain bleed, then yeah you want as little mental stimulation as possible, and spending 8 hours with eyes closed in a quiet dark room is a good way to achieve that. Clarafosize says. Lol sorry to disappoint, the emphasis on the glasses was just that had I been wearing a sports strap or something, I would have realized maybe a stride or two sooner that he was going straight instead of turning. With horses even one stride can make a big difference in where you end up, especially with his long legs. Bozersmum says. Last year my mom was thrown from a horse on a tourist trail. Didn't hit her head, but her back was hurting. My dad stayed to camp with his friends, and she drove herself home. I dragged her to the hospital, when I found out the next day. Sure enough, multiple spinal fractures, and a cracked rib. Sasanik so says. I hate to ask, but is your parents marriage okay? If that had happened to my hubby, I'd be driving him to the air directly myself not hanging with my friends. Bozersmum says. I was more pissed at my dad than my mom was, he did feel really bad when he heard the Zray results. They both assumed she must be fine, since she could walk. Idiots. Tonk1968 says. I had a horse jump into me and slam me into a tree. Broke my helmet also and my collarbone. I was knocked out cold. I don't remember that day or much about the year afterwards. These are not kidding around. Glad you are okay, I think we were far less knowledgeable decades ago. Glad you were wearing a helmet. If you had been riding western you probably would not have, off the track thoroughbreds are some tricky beasts and I ride Arabs. Corgiverse says. As an equestrian and emergency room nurse I'm reading this horrified. Op, your trusted adult should have taken you immediately to the ur. Hell, the last time I fell I was irked that my husband made me go to the air, and while nothing was broken I didn't know that at the time. Love6471 says. Had a horse do similar due to a negligent trainer as well, I was only in like 3rd grade, but it's still one of the scariest moments of my life, we were all the way outside in a pasture and all I could do was hang on. Luckily I had leaned down to better hang on because I completely forgot about the bar on the stall door. Once the horse stopped I sat up and realized I almost got clothes lined. 
My mom was so upset we didn't go back. R slash today I fricked up. New positive 13 says. Today I fricked up be making a dark joke about the death of a close friend. The ex-BF of a friend of mine works at the vape store I frequent. A few weeks ago I needed yet another nicotine fix and popped in. He was ringing me up and asked if I had heard from the friend recently. I knew their breakup was amicable and they had still been in contact when she had suddenly passed about a year ago. I jokingly answered nah you die don't, frick, with Ouija boards. He gave me a very bewildered look and asked what I was talking about. I then realized he did in fact not know about her passing. He then explained that he had cut contact about a month before her passing due to getting a new GF. He looked like he was about to cry, and instead of sticking around I grabbed my stuff and bolted out of the store. I have not been back since. Sorry dude. Too long, didn't read, I assumed that a friend's ex knew about her passing, and cracked a bad joke then bolted. Cossiguide one says. I sent a buddy an obituary of a high school classmate. I didn't know that he had a date lined up with her before she stopped messaging him. She literally ghosted him. Solid Snacker says. If that isn't ghosted then IDK what is? Emerald Encrusted says. He found out that he in fact wasn't, dash it. Emerald Encrusted says. I might get downvoted for this, but I don't think this is actually that bad. People are flippant about death all the time, and just because he wasn't aware of her passing, doesn't make you somehow bad. Now, if you had made this joke, after he had said something about missing her after her passing and wishing she was still there to talk to him, that would've been a peanut move. Wow is love you how is life says. I agree. Op bolting definitely wasn't the best decision but it's understandable. Aslan 194 says. Is it understandable? A normal response would be, oh, sorry, I thought you knew, and then you can leave. Dr. Stranger Lavaga says. You first hint he didn't know, should have been asking, if you had heard from her, but all things considered not the worst thing that's ever been said. Maybe a quick text is in order, hey sorry I put my foot in my mouth, I didn't realize you didn't know end of the day not your fault. Kid Liviathan says. Admittedly, it's a really good joke from Fayo. Grim 1952 says. The joke wasn't the problem, it was finding out a person he loved died. Step into the future says. That really is a frick up, you better apologize to your friend when he has calmed down and had time to process this. Pulpist Fictionist says. His friend is dead. The guy at the vape store isn't his friend. Specificero 101 says. Seems pretty obvious they didn't know when they ask a question about the person that implies they're alive. Composer 84 says. It's not the worst thing that somebody's ever said. It's edgy and an unfortunate way for someone to find out about the passing of a rex. Oh. Was it the dude's ex? That's kinda, frick, ed up but it is funny on some level. IDK. I don't even know what I feel after reading this. Third official kid says. You didn't do anything bad, but you should think about why you bolted, and try to work on that, because being able to stick it out, and make the situation better will stand you in good stead. Amelia Bedelia 7 says. My dad is absent and my cousin's dad is dead. At Father's Day I mentioned, having forgotten to call mine, and she said, if you got a row at Gboard we can try mine, so I said probably a better conversation than I'd get, and she said oh sure, yes, no, yes, no, end. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.